Hi everyone, welcome to the pedagogy. Today we are going to cover the 6th unit of NCRT Geography, Major Landforms of Earth. Without further delay, let's begin. The landforms of Earth are often created due to two factors. One is due to the internal cause and the other one is due to external cause. We know our Earth is spinning on its own axis. At the same time, there are some internal movements in the Earth too. The land portion of Earth sink and uplift due to this factor. Likewise, the outer land areas are often eroded due to agents like air and, air and water and uh, uh, soil erosion and deposition occur due to them and again this play as a major significant factor which causes change in the external world. Due to this internal and external causes, the landforms of earth is formed and the major one we are going to cover in this chapter are mountains, plateaus and plains. Let's see them one by one. First come mountain. The highly elevated land is called mountain. We often measure its height from sea level. It has a broad base and a narrow summit, simply said as a conical structure. Some mountains are very tall and they often hit the cloud. The temperature falls as we go higher and because of this the climatic condition in the hill region are breezy. The world's tallest elevation is Mount Everest, likewise there are underground mountains too. Mauna Kea is the world's tallest underground mountain, it's in Hawaii region of Pacific Ocean. You would have seen mountains that are connected and continuous, these are said as mountain ranges and the world's famous mountain ranges are Alps, Himalayas and Andes. The human settlements are often less here in mountains because the agricultural and construction possibilities are less here as the lands are sloped and also due to heavy rainfall, landslides occur. Also there is an other physical feature called hill. They look similar to mountain but their elevation is often lesser than 600 meters. The elevation above 600 meters are said as mountains and please don't get confused between these two. Three types in mountain, fold, block and volcanic mountain. Fold mountain is further divided into young fold and old fold mountain. Himalayan and Alps mountain are samples of young fall mountain. The relief is rocked and they have high conical peaks. The second type is old fall mountain. By the name old fall, we can able to represent its structure. They are very old and been here for several centuries. Once upon a time, they were young fall too, but due to wearing and tearing process on the surface over years, their conical shapes were changed to round structures. Next comes block mountain. When there is a breakout in large area, they tend to uplift and sink. Elevations that are formed due to this activity are said as block mountain. The uplifted land is said as host and likewise the sinking path is said to be graben. Examples of uh, block mountains are Rhine Valley and Vosges Mountains. The third comes volcanic mountain. The name says it all. They have volcanoes in them and may burst at any time. Volcanoes are nothing but a molten lava that are hidden in the underground. They fume and burst due to their internal conditions. Examples of volcanic mountain are Mount Kilimanjaro and Mount Fujiyama. Now let's see what mountain offers us and why they are so important. Mountains are the storehouses of water. Every river begins from mountain and they travel towards the sea. We have seen mountains covered with ice. They are said as glaciers. Glaciers are again a river in ice form. As mountains are the storehouse of water, on its passage many dams and reservoirs are built. From the rushing water, the electricity is generated and further split into lands for irrigation. Also, mountain has a rich variety of flora and fauna that comprises both plants and wildlife. They also offer timber, rubber, honey and medicines and they help us in vast form. The second landform type that we are going to see is plateaus. The elevated flat land is said as plateau. They have a huge rock-like structure and their height vary from few hundred meters to few thousand meters. We have Young Plateau and Old Plateau. Deccan Plateau in India is one of the oldest plateau in the world. Likewise, there are East African Plateau and Western Plateau of this type. Tibet Plateau is the world's tallest plateau. Its height varies from 4000 to 6000 meters. There are Lava Plateaus. They are rich in black soil and they are very fertile. Plateaus are very rich in minerals, so many mining factories are seen here. African Plateau has gold and diamond minerals. Likewise, Chota Nagpo Plateau in India are rich in iron, coal and manganese. Also, Plateaus have many scenic spots and waterfalls. Hundru Falls 
which is located in Chotanakpur Plateau in the river Subarnareka and Jock Falls, Karnataka, a few examples. The third complaints, it's a flatland. Many of them are even and some of them are rugged, and their highest elevation extends up to 200 meters from sea level. We know a river originates from mountain. They erode the mountaineer soil and deposit their carriers along the way. The largest plains are thus formed with these deposits. The world's largest plains are seen in Asia and North America. Largest plains are formed in India with the deposits of river Ganga and Brahmaputra. Likewise, they are formed in China with the deposits of river Yangtze. Plains are very fertile and largely suited for agriculture. Also, human settlements are large here as transportation and housing is easy. The densely populated Indian plain is Indo-Gangetic plain. It's formed with the deposits of uh, river Ganga and Indus. Sometimes there are shift in land structures due to natural calamities. With forecasting measures, loss of life could be minimized. So we have come to an end. Hope the lesson is useful and I will see you on the next good video.